Hey guys, DV Tutorials here with part 4 of the Precision Build series. Today we will be upgrading the T5500 computer to have a total of 4 hard drives. We will be installing 2 solid state drives in the first drive bay using a 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch drive bay converter. We will also be installing an additional 500GB hard drive in the other available 3.5 inch bay and adding an additional SATA wire and power cable to do so. Finally, we'll be installing another 3.5 inch hard drive in the 5.25 inch drive bay using a 5.25 to 3.5 inch drive bay converter. Some of the materials we will need to complete this upgrade include a 3.5 inch hard drive, two 128 gigabyte 2.5 inch solid state drives along with a 3.5 to 2.5 inch drive bay converter, an additional 3.5 inch hard drive, along with a five and a quarter to three and a half inch drive bay converter, some assorted zip ties and a pair of wire cutters, as well as a two foot SATA power extender and a two foot SATA cable. To get started, we will first need to remove the motherboard to add the new SATA cable and power cable for the third hard drive. To start, we will unlock and move the hard drive platform out of the way, allowing access to the rest of the computer. Then unlock the PCI port cover and remove any PCI cords and video cards like so. Next we will remove the dust cover protecting the memory modules. Then remove the CPU riser board and disconnect the power if your computer is equipped with one. Be sure to check out our other videos for further details on this process if you are not familiar with removing any of the components. Now we will remove the riser board bracket and the fans at the front of the case. Removing the fans is pretty straightforward. There is one screw at the very front of the case that needs to be removed. Then you can slide the fan assembly up and disconnect the two wires from the motherboard to remove it. To remove the riser board bracket, there are three screws that need to be removed from the motherboard like so. And then the bracket can be lifted out of the case. Then it is just a matter of removing the eight screws attaching the motherboard to the computer chassis. Finally, disconnect the power cables, speaker wires, SATA cables, and CPU power cables from the motherboard as you can see here. Once everything is disconnected, carefully slide the motherboard forward and then lift it out of the case. Okay, what we need to do now is run a SATA power cable along the bottom of the case, up the side to the hard drive tray, along with a SATA cable as well. To get started, we will need to remove the cable ties along the bottom of the case, holding the existing wires in place. The new wires will be installed alongside the existing ones, which run underneath the motherboard when it is installed into the case. Now we can run the SATA cable along the chassis here, following the path of the existing one. Once that cable is in place, we can run the SATA power extension cable along the path of the existing one as well. Then you can use your cable ties to hold everything neatly into place. Then all we need to do is make the connection from our new power extension cable to the existing SATA power cable here by the power supply. As you can see, when we fold the hard drive tray down, we now have two sets of SATA and power running to the first hard drive bay for our solid state drives. And then we have a third set running to the second drive bay for our third hard drive. We're now going to reinstall the motherboard into the computer case. Very gently drop the motherboard into place, ensuring that none of the wires get pinched in the process. Once the motherboard is lined up, slide it slightly to the rear of the case to ensure that the board is aligned with the IO shield and the ports at the back of the chassis. Once the motherboard is positioned properly in the computer case, we will replace the eight screws and secure it into place. Now it is just a matter of plugging the wires back into the motherboard and plugging the new SATA cable into an available SATA port. Then reconnect the main power cable to the motherboard. Next we will reinstall the riser board mounting bracket and the three screws that secure it into place. Finally, replace the dual fans at the front of the case ensuring that you plug them into the fan power slots on the motherboard and replace the screw that holds the assembly in place. So here we have the two solid state hard drives, which are each 2.5 inch hard drives. You can see I have them mounted in a 3.5 to 2.5 inch drive bay converter. This allows them to be mounted one on top of the other, 
so that we have two drives in a single bay. Basically, the installation of them is very straightforward. We have four screws for each hard drive, two on each side. You can access the screws through a port on the side of each mount, like this, to mount the hard drives into the bay. Once you have those mounted, you can see we have the power and SATA ports accessible on one end of the bay converter, and we can install the mount into the computer. If we go ahead and flip down the hard drive tray, we can take our drive bay converter with our hard drives and slide it into place. Simply line the pegs up on the right side of the adapter, and then on the left side, pull back the blue tabs and latch the adapter into place. We have now converted a single 3.5 inch hard drive bay into a dual 2.5 inch hard drive bay. Now if you go around to the back of the drives, you can connect the SATA power and SATA cable, and then the other SATA cable and SATA power to each drive like so. Then we can install our 3.5 inch drive into the 3.5 inch bay right here. Simply line the pegs up on the right, pull back the blue tabs on the left, and latch the drive into place. Then attach the new SATA cable and SATA power cable at the rear of the hard drive like so. Our fourth drive will be installed in one of the available 5.25 inch drive bays right here above the Blu-ray drive. Our remaining 1TB hard drive will be installed using a 5.25 inch to 3.5 inch drive bay converter. This will allow us to make use of the available 5.25 inch bay at the top of the computer case. This converter works very similar to the 3.5 to 2.5 inch converter. Basically, we'll be installing the metal brackets on both sides of the hard drive, which will extend the drive to fit in the 5.25 inch drive bay. Installing the brackets are fairly straightforward. Two screws are installed on each side of the hard drive to connect the adapter to the drive using the existing holes on the drive. Then two screws are attached to the outside of the bracket, one on each side, which allows the bracket to be installed into the racking system in the computer. We are now ready to install the drive into the computer. We will need to remove the front panel and the drive bay cover to access the bays. To remove the front panel, pull up on the blue tab inside the front of the computer and then push the silver front panel up to remove it. To remove the plastic drive bay cover, push down on the blue plastic latch and just pull the cover away from the computer like so. As you can see, we now have access to both 5 and a quarter inch drive bays as well as the one 3 and a half inch bay at the front of the computer. Now it is simply a matter of lining the hard drive up with the bay, gently sliding it into the computer and latching the drive into place. Here is an alternative view to show the process of installing the drive to make it easier to understand. Then we will replace the drive bay cover and the front panel on the computer. Now I will go ahead and make the SATA connection and connect the power at the back of the hard drive. Here I have slid the DVD drive out of the way to make it easier to see this process, but it is not necessary for you to do so. As you can see, thanks to the help of the brackets, we have a hard drive installed here, two hard drives installed here, and one installed here and have thus upgraded the precision to a total of four hard drives.